Welcome to a quick demonstration of Render Sphere. This is Van Cameron from Dreamlight. Render Sphere is the ultimate character rendering solution. It gives you lighting, special effects like shadows, and all the cool stuff surrounding your scene. It enables you to add 3D surrounding effects to your characters and then gives you the possibility to further enhance the scene inside Photoshop with pre made actions. Around your inside Dash Studio 4.6, it's super easy to load. Just navigate to Dash Studio Formats, My Library, Dreamlight, Render Sphere, and double click on Render Sphere. It preloads everything to your scene. And this is a real surrounding, uh, I call it Render Sphere, that has effects going around. So if you orbit the camera here, you can get a feeling for that it is indeed in 360 degrees. Alright? And the thing is, if you take a look at it from perspective view, you note that there are multiple spheres with a vast amount of effects surrounding the scenery. And this breakdown here of the effects, uh, you got the background effect, you got the dust or snow surround effect, uh, you got the fog which right now is turned off. It has fog effects, it has ground fog effects, it has rain effects. You can easily just turn them off by clicking here. And the thing is, this rain effect is in 3D, so it has both a background layer and a foreground layer, so it works uh, around your, your scenery. Further on, uh, the background itself is made of, uh, it's made of special images so when you go around and rotate it you note know that it switches to different types of backgrounds so you can use whatever that suits your scene and you can of course also zoom out uh, the, the camera I'm gonna be showing you later on exactly how that works um, I'm actually gonna do that quickly awesome all right so you also have here um, the ground or just fog effects. You can turn on the foreground ground effect, which is here uh, in front of a character, and you've got also a background uh, ground fog, which is behind the character. And these are working in 3D as well, so you get a sense for them uh, when you're using them. And also, you can have full screen fog effects if you choose to, uh, which you know enhance and add additional stuff you can just um, and everything is in surround effect all right let me turn off these effects here and i'm going to just load a character quickly here to show you how you can easily create a render like this uh, in just a few minutes so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna preload a character into my scene all right so i'm simply merging that into my scene and once loaded, as you can see, the character is placed right in the center of this set. All right, so when you tap the orbit uh, icon here of the camera, you can see that it goes around the character. Okay, so let's set, for instance, we wanna have some rain effects here, obviously. And what you can do with the rain effect is, of course, you can adjust its intensity when you select it and when you go to surfaces click here and on the opacity channel you can adjust how thick you want the rain to be all right super easy just take whatever you want to have here you can of course switch the color of the rain here by adjusting the ambient color uh, I can just show you you can do a flashy green if you want to I'm gonna undo that of course right now and further on, while selected here, you can go to the, just a notch above here, it says rain effect, size, and rotation. Click on that, and you can go to parameters. Now you can rotate and orbit the rain around your character and choose whatever, you know, position of the rain that suits your, your scene. You can also rotate on the Z axis, all right, to set exactly how I want the rain to look like. You can scale it up and down, and it scales both foreground and background at the same time. 
so you can get exactly the rain effect you're after. Um, you can also move the rain left and right if you choose to, up and down, and also in and out to match and it gives that illusion of 3D effect because it surrounds your, your entire scenery. Okay, once done, you can go ahead and add fog. So I'm gonna, for instance, turn on background ground fog. Once added, uh, while this at the bottom here is selected, you can just go to surfaces. And here again, you can choose how thick you want that effect to be. All right, how um, the ambient here controls the color so you can choose for instance red if you want that to be the case let's just use blue for now all right further on if you just go and not uh, a little bit up here a little bit higher up you see it says background ground fog size and rotation now in the parameters tab you can rotate that effect behind your character move it up and down and you can rescale it so let's say you want to have a larger, you know, effect or smaller effect. Well, not too small, right? Whatever that suits your scene, then adjust height and orbit around like that. So you can just select. Also note the edges here are toned. So if you want to tone it away slightly on one side, you can do that. Just by rotating the bed, tones away. When you're happy, simply let it be and let's move on to the uh, foreground fog which is here i'm going to turn it on this one is in front of the character again what's selected here you can go to surfaces adjust its opacity how thick do you want that fog to be all right next you can change its color again on the ambient to whatever color that suits your mood or style i'm going to undo that next just jump one bit up here it says ground fog foreground ground fog size and rotation in the parameters tab you can just adjust its rotation all right when i mean if you're happy you can zoom in and out adjust height to whatever suits your render all right when we are done with that, I'm not going to add the full, you know, um, fog effect here, but you got here some dust effect. Well, these are the small items here you can see, and you have three of them, large, medium, and small. They're kind of pre-made here. The small is those tiny, tiny, tiny bits you can see here. Those you can also, again, as I showed you earlier, adjust in surfaces to change their opacity and color. I'm gonna just leave them there, but you can you know, increase that as heavy as you want it to be. All right, you can of course change the color again on the ambient. Then you got the medium sized, which is pretty much this one here, the layer here, same functions, and you have the large one here. You can adjust that as well. I'm gonna maybe do that a little bit. I think it's okay there. All right. Then you can of course turn off the uh, just collapse that. Um, the background, I think it's good as is. But what, what you can do with the background, of course, is you can click on it and here change how strong you want it to be by adjusting the ambient strength. So how strong do you, the background do you want it to be? Do you want it to be just a little bit here or super bright or maybe nothing at all? So let's just pick something here. All right, you also have the possibility here to go for size, okay? And rotation. So you can rotate the background around. You can scale it up and down if you want to have more of it. Don't do too much, it's kind of pre-made to be working as is. You can move it up and down to suit your render if you want to change it. Um, that's it for the background. Fog is done, we got rain done, and we got the lens effect, which is kind of a cool thing. It's actually those 
extra layers here that they kind of render in colors they don't render they don't preview in colors right now but these are really cool and again here you can change the color of it ambient would just change the color to whatever you want to have uh, you can also change the opacity how strong they want them to be here just go a little bit up it says lens ring size rotation click on that now we can just you know rotate them around your scene place them exactly where we want them to be uh, you can scale them up and down and you can move them up and down uh, as well if you like to all right so when done here you've got pre-made uh, light set uh, first of all you have a camera here it needs to be rendered through this camera because you have a light parented to the camera the light just adds a little bit of extra nudge just straight on on your character all right so you have the the lights they're kind of pre-made so you're ready to render right now i'm just gonna quickly walk you through it you have a key light that has a special pa special pattern if you remember the image i was showing here you know it has a special distinctive pattern across the character and that pattern is achieved by having a, a special plane here shadow plane attached to that light so when you look through that light here uh, key shadow light it has a pattern that you can see here and that pattern uh, you can play with it I'm gonna just adjust the background so you can actually see it it's a pattern that's attached to the light itself so when you have the light selected here you can actually move the light and we'll just follow along and we can precisely pinpoint where you want the, uh, this pattern to be by clicking on the shadow plane, go into parameters tab, now we can rotate it, change how it affects, how it you know, attacks your character, you can rotate it and, and you know, play with it. You can even rotate on this axis to change how the, the blinds, if you will, how they you know, affect your character. And you can also move it here like that so you can decide well I want to leave out her head and, and get a little bit more lighting on onto that okay you can also scale it up and down to change how big this pattern is all right when done you have pre-made you know lights like fill fill lights these lights just cover the entire scene and they are again pre-made for the character or, or any character they're just pre-made for the scene what you can do here um, I'm just gonna quickly walk you through we have feel light here feel right bounce bounce right then you've got back left and back right these are pre-made and by default the back right is turned off you can turn on if you want to uh, the others just are on by default okay so back to the camera and we're pretty much ready to render right now I'm gonna just adjust the camera slightly here to get a different view on my character just like that and I'm gonna just turn her a little bit to the uh, right like that all right I'm just gonna quickly save my scene and we are pretty much ready to render it's it's that easy guys it's made to be easy you know out of the box um, also if you want to you can of course change the background color if you go here and click on the background DOF effect go to surfaces you can of course just change the color to whatever you like red or something whatever you you know whatever that suits your render you can just change that and you can of course preload your own backgrounds it's as easy as adding a texture here to the uh, diffuse color. Um, that's it, we're ready to render. So I'm gonna just click render and I'll see you in a moment. All right, and here just a couple of minutes later, it's actually done and fine. The final render is, is completed and it's designed to be really quick. And this is of course a 64-bit version of the software, uh, but it just takes a few uh, minutes to render then you have the the image now we're gonna move into Photoshop 
I'm just gonna bring and load our image here. Awesome. I'm gonna zoom in 100%. And just easy as taking that render sphere filter, filters uh, actions here, and you got th uh, three of them to, to choose from Miami, cold, and default. I'm gonna choose, if you choose Miami, you're gonna get a kind of warmish effect. And uh, if that's your preference, then you can just go with that. Otherwise, you can use cold, just hit play. Or if you prefer, you can just use the default one. It will not recolor the image, just add a few effects. So once this is completed, I'm gonna just move that away and bring out the layers. So you can play with them, it's super easy, super quick. Um, basically you have a few options here. You got the gamma, you can just adjust that to, to your taste. If you want a washed out effect. You got glow. Glow one, you can glow two. Just adjust your taste. Uh, tint is not used here, but if you want to, you can just add any color you like. For instance, magenta. Just fill it in here, and it will just recolor your uh, your image, and then adjust how much of that you want in your scene. All right, I'm gonna just keep it at zero here. And you got the faded faded um, uh, edges effect here that you can just adjust to turn out the the edges. And if you want to, you can just go ahead here and add transform on that particular layer and just move away slightly that fading effect if it distracts your, your image. And adjust your taste. And that's it. And when you're done, you can simply flatten the image. If you want to continue to play with it, you can you know, adjust the brightness and contrast make it a little bit more punchy. After that, you can still play a little bit more with duplicate layer and still play with the screen here to add a little bit more punch if you want to. And guys, that's it. This is Render Sphere for Dash Studio. Super quick way of instantly adding great backdrop with surround effects that you can adjust inside Dash Studio with complete lights and shadow effects. Just bring it into Photoshop and fine tune there. If you like this video, I think this is cool. Grab Render Sphere right now and have instant fun with your Dash Studio characters. See you next time.